Hey YouTube fam, welcome back to my channel. Just in case you're new, my name is Alyssa Marie. Welcome. So today I'm doing something that I would not be doing under normal circumstances in a normal world. I would not be cutting my own hair. But today, I'm gonna show y'all how to curl dust your own hair at home. Now I'm gonna specify, I'm not trimming, I'm curl dusting. And we're gonna go through the difference between the two, the importance of it, all of the above, and then we're gonna actually get in to the cutting. But before we get into all of that, please do make sure that you are subscribed to my channel. Just go ahead, push that button, and then we can get started. All right, so I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little bit nervous because I literally would not be doing this if it weren't for the pandemic outside. Honestly, like, when it comes to using scissors in my own hair, like, I'm just not brave enough for that. I have always relied on hairstylists and the experts to deal with the cutting, the shaping, all of that good stuff. Um, and I've always actually suggested that to you guys. Now, you guys always hear me say how important it is to go for your regular trims every four to six months. Well, your girl was due for a trim in March. It didn't happen. Pandemic happened instead. And it's now May and my hair is crying. It is screaming out to me like, girl, I need help. And so how my hair looks like when it really needs a trim is that there is intense shedding. Like the shedding just continues getting worse and worse and more and more. And my hair will also be a lot drier. Like it'll get drier quicker. Um, my curl definition will not last as long. So these are just a couple signs that I start to notice and the signs are like consistent. So it's like all the time my hair is saying, please like trim me, trim me, trim me. So trimming is definitely like a hugely important part of your natural hair regimen. But because we are all in this pandemic, what I am gonna do today is curl dusting. So let's just cover quickly the difference between the two. So curl dusting is basically just like how it sounds. You're dusting off the very ends of your hair. So it doesn't have anything to do with like maintaining a shape. It's not cutting your hair. You're not cutting very much at all. You're even not cutting every single hair on your head. You're basically just gonna be going through your hair, kind of curl by curl, and if you see certain ends that look a little bit sad, look a little frayed, you just snip off a little bit of the end and that's it. So that's basically what I'm gonna be doing here today. On the other hand, what a trim is, it's more like maintaining your shape. So you're cutting a little bit more off, you're going to a hair expert, a hair professional to get this done. I always, always suggest that. Usually when you go for a trim, your hair is like completely out of shape. Like y'all can see like, <laughs> my hair is so out of shape is not even funny. So the trim will get me back into business, back in my shape and good to go. So the reason why I simply cannot just sit down and wait in order for the hairdressers to open back up is again because I'm experiencing all of these negative side effects from my hair not getting a trim. So the most important thing about getting a trim, and this is something that a hairstylist told me, is that when you're trimming, you're basically opening up the hair shaft again. So you, when you cut those ends, it's like, they call it like oxygenating the hair. So by cutting off those dead and like old dry ends, you're just giving life, literally, an oxygen back into your curls and it allows them to receive product better. So like if you're a curly girl and you're watching this, you know what I mean when I say like your ends don't really take product the same way that the middle of your hair does. Like you have to put extra moisturizer there for it to not feel dry sometimes, especially when you're due for a trim. So really what I'm aiming to go for here is to just give some life back to my curls. They're definitely struggling a bit in terms of the shedding especially. I think that's the worst thing that I'm experiencing right now. So I just wanna try and oxygenate my ends a little bit. Literally not trying to take away any length because I mean, <laughs> Do y'all see this though? Quick shout out to my leg. But yeah, I just feel like my hair is desperate for it and this is what we about to do to try and save my curls and maintain the health of my curls. But today I'm just gonna be really addressing any like crazy straight ends like this, any frayed kind of hair, any dry ends. We just go clip it off and that's it. Nothing too crazy, nothing too drastic. Like my hair really shouldn't look too much different afterwards. Okay, so if you are like, yes sis, I need to do the same thing, the first thing you need to do is buy you some hair shears, okay? These are hair cutting shears. You cannot 
cut your hair with regular paper scissors or the scissors that just chill in the kitchen. Like you can't do that. That will actually make your curly girl problems even worse. So the regular paper scissors or the scissors in the kitchen, those are a lot more dull than what a regular hair cutting shear would be. So when you cut your hair with dull scissors, it can actually cause split ends. I mean, you don't want to come into this trying to help your curls and then end up coming out on the other end making your curls even worse. So that is the first very important thing is to make sure you're getting proper hair cutting shears. So I actually sat down and did a lot of research and I'm a little embarrassed to say how long I spent doing research on scissors. But I found these nice little shears. They had really great reviews and it came on time. I didn't have to wait like a whole month. Like I, I'm tired. My hair is tired and I needed to just get this done. So I wanted something that was like in stock, that would come timely, and that is recommended by actual professional hairstylists. So this one is by Sheer Guru and it came in this cute little plastic carrying case, which is where I'll keep them. And so here is how they look close up. So these I ordered on Amazon for $49.99. They came on time, they're good quality, and the reviews. I'm gonna go ahead and tag it below. You guys can go ahead and check it out for yourself, but this was the best thing that I could find that could come the quickest for me. I actually found that a lot of professional hairstylists say that this is what they use on the regular, like all the time. So I'm like, wow, this is gonna be perfect. I know 50 bucks for a pair of scissors kinda is like, mm, but I wanted to make sure that I was not gonna damage my hair. So to me, it was kinda worth it. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. I think what I'm gonna do is start by sectioning my hair. I'm just gonna do two sections. It's kind of hard to tackle the whole fro all at once. So I'm just gonna lightly section this out. All right, so I think this is about good. So I'm just gonna do two halves. And this is basically just so I can see the curls a little bit easier. Boom, super, super cute. I know, right? Mm -hmm. So by the way, I'm starting with completely dry hair. This is actually day two hair. And it's that's like very important. You kind of don't want to cut your curls when it's wet, like anytime. I feel like for curly hair in general, it should be cut in its natural state, like 100%. Whether you're doing it yourself or with a professional stylist, I personally don't believe in the whole straightening your hair to cut it. Like, I just feel like that's not the best way to cut curly hair. I think the best way is to cut it in its natural state because that makes the most sense. Like, this is exactly how my hair lays, so why not cut it in the way that it lays, you know? Dusted though, we're dusting. So my personal little humble advice, if a hairstylist tells you that they need to blow out and straighten your hair in order to cut it, run. Because usually those shapes end up a hot mess. <sighs> All right, so I'm just gonna kind of fluff my curls a little bit, get them all out and about. And then I'm just kind of looking through to see if there are any hairs that kind of stand out to me that kind of need like a little trimmy trim. Do we need to zoom this in? Do y'all want to see the action? All right, let's zoom it in. All right, how's that? Woo, wow, y'all are gonna see everything, huh? Okay, so this is an example of a hair that needs a little trim. So you can see here, this has got, <laughs> this particular hair has got like a little funky curl pattern going on. But you can see here at the end, right here, where it kind of like frays out. Do you see those little hairs right here at the end? We're just gonna snip those off. So ready, set, snip. Done. So now you can see the end of this strand has like a very defined end. It's not like frayed out like that, you know? So all of the curls that kind of have the little frayed ends, we're just gonna snip those right off. I have no complaints with the scissors, by the way, because it's literally just cutting through the hair like butter. It should not feel like you're actually cutting anything. Like, you know that feeling that you feel when you're cutting paper with paper scissors? It literally should not feel like any kind of resistance or nothing. It should just be like, like butter, boom. Boom, like that's how sharp these hair shears need to be. So I'm really just addressing this curl by curl. I'm also looking closely to see if I see any single strand knots. See a single strand knot? Snip it. 
You see any split ends? Snip it. Woo! Ooh, there is a dirty split end in this one. Snip. This is kind of fun, y'all. I'm really trying hard not to get carried away. So I know going curl by curl is kind of like, girl, what? Like, ain't nobody got time for that. But it's really the best way to ensure that you're not gonna cut too much and to ensure that like you're just cutting the hairs that need it. So if you are gonna do this, pick a day when you have some time and just sit down and just get it done, girl. Your curls will thank you for it. But on the other hand, if you feel too nervous to do this, and if you're not 100% desperate, then don't do it. Because I do have highlighted hair, I'm actually noticing that my colored ends are looking like they have a lot more issues than my not colored ends. So I'm actually kind of focusing more where I see my highlighted hair, I'm just snipping away. All right, so I've kind of gone through a lot of the hairs at the bottom. Should be told that I go through every single hair. No, ain't nobody got time for that. You can kind of just go through in like weeks to follow if you just see a little snip snip here, a little snip snip there. That's probably what I'm gonna have to keep doing until I can get a professional to really shape me back into place. All right, so time to tackle the top. I'm actually noticing how it looks right now. All I can see are the ends. So I feel like this little poof we got going here will actually help me see my ends a little bit better. So I think I'm just gonna cut it just like this. Ah! These scissors really are sharp. I definitely just cut myself. Yeah, be careful with the hair shears, okay? It will cut your finger. These are sharp. Oh, all right, moving right along. All right, so I kind of feel like I've gone through majority of the curls here at the top, so I'm just gonna go ahead, take this out. just fluffing my curls out now into their natural state which is supposed to be with bangs I just want to see how the shape is looking so see what I mean I didn't really do anything to fix the shape I literally just dusted the ends so there's really still a good little shape going on here I didn't disrupt that all I did was cut off some bad ends that needed to be cut so now I am just gonna go through and kind of Feel for any random strands that still need another little snip. Wow. Like in real time, like I'm not about to make this video an hour, but like in real time I'm looking at the clock and I've been doing this for like an hour and a half. So this really, really takes lots of time and lots of patience, but I think I'm at a point that I'm pretty happy with. So yeah, by the time you're done, you are gonna end up with big fluffed out curls, kind of like this, which I kind of like it, it's kind of cute actually. Y'all know I love the volume. But yeah, maybe not something you wanna do like right before your Zoom call, just leave this for maybe at night. Um, another good thing to do is then go in and you can do like a little overnight moisture mask, something to just Again, give like some more life to those oxygenated ends now, you know, so I'm definitely going to go ahead and do that as well. All right, guys, so that is basically it for this video. This is how I'm curl dusting my curls at home and kind of just my way of like saving the health of my curls until I'm able to see a professional stylist who can then get me all back shaped up and perfect again. I'm not recommending this if you are not desperate, if your hair is not showing any terrible signs, if your hair is perfectly fine, I definitely, definitely recommend that you just leave it until we can get to our stylist again. Only if you are desperate, kind of like how I've become and are experiencing hair issues more and more every single week, and you know it's because you need a trim, then yeah, go ahead and do it. I mean, there's really no harm in it as long as you are just 
dusting. I will probably next week after I wash my hair, I'll probably go in, check out my ends again, and maybe snip a little bit more. So this can be something that you do in a couple of sessions if you don't want to sit here for like an hour and a half like I did tonight. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, y'all know what to do. Go ahead and give your girl a thumbs up. And also, if you have any additional questions, go ahead and comment them below. I'll catch y'all in the next one. Bye.